Okay. So good morning, everybody. This is Craig, and I'm actually um, remote this morning. Nice thing about what we do as health coaches is we can work from anywhere. So I'm getting my car serviced on this June 2nd Friday health coach huddle. So we've got a great uh, um, uh, training for you today. It's actually um, we're going to do a little bit of celebration because um, there's been a couple people that had uh, some new rank advancements. So that's pretty fun. And then we also have, um, we're going to do some polling with you. So, uh, Daniela and Diane and Kim created some polling questions for us so that we can take a poll and see who needs, um, you know, what kinds of things we need to do. But one of the things I was just noticing is that the polls are going to work best when we have people to poll. And right now the people that are being polled would be Christina and then the rest of the gang. So I think it might be a um, a great idea to go in and let's send some text messages out to a couple of our team and see if we can get them uh, to pop in here so we can get some good data. We'll just take a minute and do that. I'm just going to pause the recording and we'll come back. All right. So um, super excited for what we're going to be going over today. Um, we've got, uh, we're going to do a poll and in a little, in a, a few minutes, but there's been some kind of big things that happened in the month of May. And so we want to talk through, um, a little bit about that with, uh, one of the people, Carrie. And by the way, if you had some people on your team that hit a new rank, um, I know of a brand new senior coach and then another coach that hit ED by volume. And we'll talk a little bit about what that does. But if you have some people on your team that hit a new rank, uh, rank make sure, you know, uh, be aware. And we're going to talk about that. But one of the things I did this week, um, as we got close to the end of the month, is we offered basically a matching incentive. And one of the things about matching incentives that work really good is that sometimes, you know, with human nature, in an idealistic world, and sometimes I play, I play in my idealistic mind too much, and I, I need to not do that as much. But I think if people can't afford this program, they don't understand the value of it, and they don't deserve it, you know. And I just get these stupid ideas in my head. And and you guys, I don't know if you know this or not, but the only reason why I'm a coach is because my coach, um, the guy that sponsored me he gave me a two week free supply of fuelings. Yeah, I know that's me. And I no, no, you, you're like going, you hypocrite, right? I know that's me. So, um, cause I was such a cheapskate, but that two weeks did something to me and I, and I became a believer. And of course I've been paying for fuelings and paying my way ever since. And so there's something I like a good deal. Even if the thing, even though I, I can afford the whatever it is, I still like to feel like I'm getting a little bit of a deal or something. And so, I mean, you can posture that where we can get you free shipping and we can get you $100 in fuelings on your first order. We can do that every day of the week because that's the B Slim Club, right? Um, but technically, if they didn't have the B Slim Club, it would be a lot more than that. You know, your first months would be what would it be it's 395 so 495 it'd be 510 plus shipping is 30 540 bucks but you can do it for 395 so i don't know if you've ever so that seems like a pretty good value oh i get and that's a pretty good deal um but what i did is i i told carrie hey let's partner up i'll do a match um and let's let's figure out how to get you to your next goal. And then uh, Don Carpenter offered the same thing. And so with two month, two days to go, it's, it was really important how you positioned it. And the terminology is I've got some leftover marketing dollars, right? So we all take our money and we can, we can invest it back into our businesses. You know, 10% is usually a good number to, to kind of think about. And so I've got some leftover marketing dollars and I'd like to, I wanted to see if that would make a difference in you being able to start your program 
you know, because I know how, you know, you're talking to somebody that wants to start. Well, she tossed this out to one of her coaches. Her name's Bessie. You guys haven't met Bessie yet. And then Bessie said, that shined up two clients immediately and became senior coach within one day. Like, so these people were right on that tipping point and the $25 just somehow motivated her to do it. So she hit senior coach first time, right? So really fun. And then I was, I was working with Carrie and Carrie, it, she's been growing her business, growing teams. So she's been um, ED with blended by blended path for three months. And then last month I'm like, do you, you know, do you want to go there? Do you want to hit ED by volume? Cause I think you can do it this month. And she's like, let's do it. So Carrie uh, went in and, and, um, cranked it out and I, I think you ended at 6277 something like that yeah something like that so she hit ed by um volume and she still has her senior coach uh team so you want to would you care to comment a little bit about how that kind of worked out and how the progression has been for you carrie as as you've hit this new high in your career um yeah i it, i don't know what to say necessarily, but um, <laughs> I think it's just a matter of trusting the process because um, I wasn't expecting to do that, that last month. And so toward the end, it was kind of, it, I don't want to say it just happened because I put in time and effort, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I could have been more intentional than I was for sure, which was a good reminder toward the end. Um, I don't really have anything to say. That's okay. Well, I know you and I have been going over your map with with Troy, and so we've been we've been paying close attention and having some some more eyes on what you're doing. And so I don't know necessarily that you're doing any heroic things, which I like, but you're doing consistent things, and we're we're monitoring. It's it seems like you've had just slow increase as you just became more and more comfortable with it, and you know, pretty soon one day it's like, yeah, I don't really have to say, I know it's global. I know. I just, it just seemed to happen. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Su super fun to see that happening. And another thing that that happens is you start to roll into the rolling consistency bonus. So as you average $6,000 a month, every three months, they pay you another thousand dollars bonus. So it's a total of $4,000 of a year if you average $6,000 or executive director by volume every month for 12 months. And then as you build on senior coach teams, then you get um, another $4,000 to be FIBC. So five senior coach teams, $6,000 in frontline volume means an extra $8,000 a year. So it's pretty neat stuff. Um, on on top of the volume bonuses, so I'm curious as you guys are as you guys are talking about that, um, uh, uh, who else had new people? Did anybody else have some new growth or some new highlights that you accomplished in the month of May? Do you wanted to share with us? No. Okay. Well, so the last couple things that I had as far as um, uh, convention rooms, we're looking, we have a couple of people that are going that don't have rooms, um, Stephanie and Christina. And so if you guys have um, options, I know there's some people that booked a room for the husband and wife and then two of those. And so we can possibly stick the girls and the guys together and then we can um, fill those rooms up. So if you have ideas on that, let me know. And then uh, our next boot camp uh, four week training is going to be starting on the 24th of June. So that th that'll be the Saturday morning training with the two activity sessions that will happen during the week. And um, a lot of you just completed the one we just did. And so this next one, um, Troy and I aren't going to be doing the primary leading on that. We're going to be shadowing somebody else to lead through that process. So all right, so those are the main um, announcements today. Um, we're going to switch over right now. Um, uh, Daniela, Kim, and Diane, and I um, worked on 
some polling and we we've been doing a lot of training uh, and that training's been on scripting and inviting and and just different processes so we thought we'd like to take a poll with the gang and figure out where what needs more work what do you guys need training on what do you have secured or not and so I'm gonna launch a couple polls and they'll come up on your screen and just read through them and take a minute to walk through them there's 10 questions and then each question has you know some of them have a scale uh, and then some of them don't right all right so here you go the poll is up now and so you can go ahead and just walk through those questions some of them are scale of one to five and some are multiple choice you guys can see that i assume so my submit buttons oh i see so we're doing them all, we're going through them all okay we were gonna have a little See, I'm not sure how that worked. Can you vote each individual question? You can vote and then scroll down and vote, scroll down. Okay, good. That's what I wanted it to be. And if you guys do have questions on any of these questions, feel free to either post it in the chat or um, you can just say something. Hello, Craig. Yeah, Dayton. And it's multiple choice. Does that mean I can choose multiple answers or is that? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep, I see yep. what you're saying. Yep. All right, thanks for clarifying that. You betcha. Is four and five the same? Say that again. Looks like four and five is the same. Oh, did I get a double question in there? Uh oh. Yes, I did. Okay, so four and five are the same. Hey, Craig. Yep. Yes, go ahead. I just realized, I just realized how much more training I need. Uh, <laughs> I doing that is such a good <laughs> statement. <laughs> Boy. Help. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to, yes. SOS, SOS. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs>
Also, I think a three on some of my answers was a little pushing it as far as confidence goes. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can go back and change them or not, but this is going to give us a good idea of where we need to go. And No, I, sub I submitted it already, so it's kind okay. of done and in stone at this point. But, you know, I, I, uh, I already pull out my SOS. I'll, you know, okay. I'll uh, well, do maybe that. Go, so. Yeah, and you can, if there's, it, while you're sitting there, if there's some that you, that you remember, re jot those down on a note so you, so you don't forget. Like which yeah. the questions that make you think that. Okay. Now, Craig, Craig, we're going to be able to go through each one, right, and look at the results. Yep. That's well, fantastic. I don't know if it's going to, it, I mean, I'm having the results. Their live data is coming in right now, but I can't necessarily tell who said what. I, um, I might be able to look that up that in, in a report, but I'll show you what it says. 72% yeah, of you have voted, so. Okay. We just need general just so that we can, yeah, want to just ask some questions and get yep. a little bit along the way. Hey, Alex, we just have a, we're going through this poll here. So if you want to take a minute and bust it out. And Steph, if, I don't know if you can log in with your telephone on Zoom, but then you'd be able to um, take the poll. I know you called in, but if you're able to log in with Zoom, um, that will allow you to take the poll as well. We've got two more people to complete the, the uh, poll. Do you see the poll up, Alex? You're good. Craig, do you like my lanterns? Yes, look at those. Nice. Hey, Craig, you should smile more because it makes people wondering what, what you're up to. <laughs> That's so much better. That little smile steals hearts, you know. Hey, Christina, you should share your camera more often. It makes people wonder what you're up to. Yeah, I'd rather not. There's a mystery here. <laughs> plus, plus, mornings are not my uh, my forte here, so it's not like I'm on point this morning or anything. This is all family. I I didn't do it my matter. Hair it's being recorded. Either. I'm a little gun shy at that point, so yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm good. At least yep. you get me. So that's right. Just Go just ahead. put on some earrings, Christina. You'll be good. <laughs> That's right. Pull your hair back. Throw some earrings. Do, Throw on um, some earrings. Has Throw anybody, on some lipstick, you know. Not, has anybody not completed it yet? Because yeah. I know Steph can't vote. I'm almost so. there. Okay. And Dayton, Touché, you, Kim. Touché. Are you have you completed it, Dayton? Okay, good. If you want to unmute, by the way, if you're on the telephones, like Steph, star six, unmute you. But I'll send you these, um, I'll send you these questions later so you can take them.
So Craig, I'm not familiar. Will there be anything for you to show with the polls or you'll just give us kind of a, there is, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you right now. So I think everybody's done it. So now I go to share results and then that's what the data, I mean, I can, I'll have a report later that'll give me this as well, but that's, um, so on the first one, so we can just go through these. I can tell my story concisely and with confidence in any situation, making the modifications needed to in order to relate to my audience. So it looks like, you know, 40% of us do have that, but there's some work to do there. Um, that's good. So Daniela, were you, did you want to talk any more about that one? Yeah, I just wasn't sure. Um, how how Craig was was going? Yeah, this is our first time. So yeah, just let's just wing it. I mean, let's go uh, learn as we go. So we have a plan. So it's, oh, it's not a wing, but it, yeah, yeah. So okay. Um, so I think in regard to the story, one of the, uh, one of the things that we would love to just kind of invite some conversation about because um, it shows that forty percent of us completely understand. Um, with confidence, right? Um, how to share our story and and make it flexible uh, based on our audience. So I would love to hear just some comments um, from people about you know what's hard, um, what's easy, that that kind of thing, so that we we kind of know where we're we're pointing our future trainings. Yeah, I just had basically saw something to say. My story, because I'm still pushing forward and there's other goals I want to get to, so it's, I have to kind of form my story to some accomplishments and some goals I've already made, and um, so I don't know how to, or I was looking at Craig's story, and maybe there's a way to kind of make it so I don't get that verbal, you know, throw up that, that we call it, so it's more streamlined and that way just that I can still have a way to focus on, I'm still working on my health, but so that was the feedback I got. Yeah, thank you, Dayton. I love what you're sharing because I don't know if maybe you realize this yet, but every single one of us, our story is always in motion. It's never done. So it's always in motion. Um, it's kind of the neat thing about a, a health journey is un until we're no longer on this earth, it, it continues forward. So I love what you're, what you're asking about because um, I think part of what you're wondering is, well, my story is always changing, so how do I um, not need to change it every single day but still have the components in there that I can use as sort of a fixed story? Is that, is that about right or is there something I'm missing? No, that's exactly right. Well, and Dayton, I wonder, because you may think, because I'm, quote unquote, f ahead of you, because I've gotten to my weight goal and I've maintained that for a few years, that my story, I mean, literally, my story is as fluid as yours. It just depends on what we're, I'm working on just different stuff, but I'm still working on stuff. And you're working on different things too. And so I can help work with you one-on-one -on, -one on, on recognizing what is actually going on with you. And, and it might look different than what the details of my story are, right? But the, the process and what's happening is we're looking for where life was before and how things are changing because of what you're learning. Now I'm learning maybe different things than you're learning, but talking about what we're learning is the thing. And then here's what, where we're going. And that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the structure of the story. So it help. Okay. To do that. Mm -hmm. Chris, Christina has her hand up. Why don't you hop off of mute, Christina? Well, I was just going to talk about the client story too, because, um, cause I struggle with sharing mine. So like, it has to be it generally. Okay. So my understanding is that it's tailored to basically to the audience. So whatever it is that you, that your story is going to impact your audience the most, that's kind of what you talk about. Right. So like, that's kind of what I, 
what I understand. I'm getting disapproval looks from Craig here. Um, but well, like that's know, it, well yeah, the only reason I said that is it depends on how comfortable you are with your story. When you first start your story, you only have one. It, it, it's, not, it's not tailored. Over time, it becomes tailored as you learn to tell it. But you start with one and you grow from there. Yeah, because I, I, I kind of, let's just be honest, I kind of suck at telling my story. I mean, I do and I don't at the same time. Like, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing for me to jump like, okay, here's, here's my story in the Reader's Digest version, basically. Like, here's the basics of my story. But then I feel like I'm missing some really important components. So, like, is there, like, a general... I don't know if I need it, but is there like a general outline of like the basics that you should talk about where you're not feeling like you're omitting anything? I mean, am I making any sense here? Cause I feel like I'm just not. No, Christina, actually you're making a lot of sense. And there is a, there is actually an outline that take shape for life has that I'm, um, let's see, is Craig's your coach? Is that right? Uh, well, Craig's, Craig's my mentor coach and, or well, Craig's my helping, helping mentor slash coach person, but John Lifeite is my actual coach and, um, Craig, as much as I love you, I mean, I got to give credit, you know, um, but <laughs> the answer, the answer though is yes, I am, I am, I am, <laughs> I am partnering with her very closely because John, um, has a full-time job. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so just for clarification, when asking your mentor coach, it's the person that's really supporting you in, in building. And so, um, Craig, so is, that, is that outline on my office of motion or is it on my TSFL? Craig can get that to you. Oh, okay. Won't be I, I just took a note that that's something we need to work on. <laughs> You're going to be yeah. busy, Craig. <laughs> this, this is awesome. This is great feedback yeah. and information. And I would just say, Christina, um, it, it's a little bit different feeling because it, at least for me, there are so many little aspects that I would love to share with everyone that I, ne so I never really tell my story completely ever, it seems like. And um, most of the time I try to focus on the person I'm talking with and which pieces will connect to them. But that, like Craig said, that, that happens over time. And um, he's got a great outline that can help you with that. One thing I wanted to just jump in and say, um, as we transition to the next question, um, is there is something going on right now with um, Optavia, and it's a, an opportunity for us to share our stories in three minutes or less. So this is an awesome opportunity for every single one of us to do. And I want to put out a challenge, and it's a challenge to me because I've already put it out and I still haven't done it. So I, you know, you're in good company here. Um, but how about we fill up our client pages with our stories? You know, take three minutes to, or three minutes or less and record our story and just start putting it out there because you know what? Our clients could win an all paid trip to convention. And so um, I would love to have as many of my clients do that as possible, but I also know it's probably not gonna happen unless I lead by example. So this is a great opportunity if you have questions on your story to get with your mentor and, um, and talk about that. So I love that, Kim. And one thing that, um, that, that makes me think about is if you're not unsure about your story, record it and send it to your mentor. And then, you know, you can work through that together. That'd be a fun way to do that. And then you'd be able to post it on, on the client page and uh, invite your clients to do the same. Awesome. So our next polling question was about our candidate list. And we had a little bit of a new concept that was presented um, when we went over this before. And that's kind of the idea of creating a master list. So not excluding people from our list. And it looks like we've maybe made some progress. We have 50% of us that have 100 or more names on our list. Um, but not too many of us have quite got all the way to getting that complete master list accomplished. So um, any questions about creating the list, about surrounding that, that whole concept of creating a master list? I wonder maybe if the question is what, um, what's making it hard to do because there's, we've got 50% of us that, that look like we have a master list. So is there a challenge around creating it? 
or is there a structure we can help with for how to create it? Yeah, I was wondering if it's just the time commitment or if it's you just don't think you know that many people. My, was, mine was that I didn't know that many people. Okay. So Dayton, do you have every single person that you know on your list that you can absolutely um, think of? I would say I have like maybe 25 or 30 out of the 50 and then that's probably why that I didn't, that I want to get out there and meet more people. I well, in your phone, post the public. I, I wonder in your phone, Dayton, just your address book in your phone, how many names are actually in there? Because if they're in your phone, you know them somehow. These aren't just people that you think would be good candidates for the program. These are just people that you know. Mm -hmm. Does that help? That yeah. And and you don't have to know them very well. I mean, that's the whole idea of coaching is that you, that's how you get to know them a little bit more and you form that relationship. So like, that's something that I really struggled with. Like, Oh, um, I don't know this person. I don't even know if they'd be interested, but that doesn't even matter. Like those questions come later. Like the people that I know, those, those people go on the list and Actually, on my list categorized to where, like, how do I know them? Oh, I know them from Bible study, or, oh, I met them through church, or, oh, I met them through this group, or whatever. Like, it, it there's no restrictions. Like, I, I had, I guess you'd call fat goggles on for a long time. Like, oh, just the people that I think would need this weight loss thing. But it's not just a, you know, it's about everything. So, yeah, that's, and that was something that helped me. And it can also be people that you don't even know their names. It could be descriptions, you know, the guy yeah. that came out to fix my air conditioning or something like that. And yeah. if you know something about them or, you know, or you might think, oh yeah, they said they like to go hiking. If I come across them again, I can, you know, maybe get their name. <laughs> right. So just kind of take it to the next step. Yeah, I think it was Craig that challenged us one time in, in a, 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 one of the power hours is to, you know, put down the, you know, your next door neighbor or who you don't know the name of, or, you know, your, the, the cleaning, uh, the cleaning guy, the guy, the cleaners. I was like, oh, okay. I don't know their name, but I'll get their name. Yeah. So Great. I'm going to pause for a moment and just ask Dayton, has this given you the potential to expand the list starting now? Yes. Uh, well, Craig, I realized that, you know, they're looking for more of a friend sometimes than they are. And it wouldn't be people that I would normally think that, oh, well, that person obviously needs to, you know, lose weight, but it's not really them people that are, mm -hmm. they want to, yes, but then there's also others that want to, too, that I would have never known wanted the program. That's right. And I want to say this for other people also. This isn't just for Dayton, but um, I'm going to stay with you, Dayton, just for a minute, just so everybody else can benefit from it. Um, so you said you had about 25 people on your list. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And do you know more than 25 people in your whole world that you know, like they're like the names of? Yeah. Okay. So since what we're saying is the list isn't about qualifying that this person would be good for the program or not good for the program. It's just people that I know. Um, could you immediately start making that list bigger then? Oh, definitely. Okay. And that's the main thing. I mean, I don't want to make it any harder than that. That was what was trying to be conveyed is, and I think Christina really nailed it when she said, um, it's not with fat goggles or this person needs health goggles that I'm looking and filtering. I'm putting in what comes later is, is that you decide how you're going to build that relationship and it may never turn into a health coach or a client, but it may turn into a really beautiful relationship in another area, or it may just stay a year over there and I'm over here. And the good news is, is then you can remove that name off your list one day if you want to. But that's, that's the main thing is um, what, what there's magic that happens when you get a hundred names and you have that, there's an abundance thing, your brain opens up. It's when you only have a few that there's this scarcity thing if you gotta get, but when you have a hundred, it's like, man, I don't know which of these people is gonna go, but I have a good amount. So I would just encourage or challenge, whichever word you like better, <laughs> everyone to commit to by tomorrow to have a hundred people on a list. That's gonna take you about 10 to 15 minutes if you honestly opened up your Facebook 
and you opened up your phone, that's all it's going to take. Thank you, Alex. Cool. That was great. Um, so this before you go on, can I just ask this? And I, but I think Alex answered it. Is like, let's say I put down the dry cleaning lady. Yeah. You know, find out her name. I don't necessarily talk to her about health at all. Just developing a relationship. Yes, that's it. And Break then through. it'll move. <laughs> that's right. What's the next step that makes the most sense? Yep, exactly. All right. Okay. Great. Well, this next question relates to your um, ability to invite people to a lot of different things that we have available as health coaches. And these numbers look are looking really good to me um, outside of the convention and regional event, and that is um, imminent. So, and I know, Alex, you trained on that, right? You did a video on that, and I think it was in the context of this call. So um, I'm wondering if anybody would like to give us some feedback about w what your discomfort is or, you know, why is it that you don't feel so comfortable around inviting people to convention, right? Because we have a big one, a really big one coming up in how many weeks, seven weeks or something. Yeah. So who would like to give us some input on that? <laughs> Nobody? Nobody? Well, well I, I will. I'll be glad to jump in and just say things that, you know, I've experienced and that still pop into my head from time to time, which is, um, it's a long way to ask people to go, right? And I know the value because I've been there. And I can't imagine somebody saying no, if they understood that value. But there's a huge bridge between helping them come have that idea that there is that kind of value there um, to travel that distance and pay that money and have a hotel and you know all that's entailed with getting there. Yeah. I agree with that, Daniela. I you know, I think I've been I have been offering it to all of my clients. Though there is a lot of it seems to be some hesitation from clients, and I know the same value as you do because I've gone to as many as you have. And if we're not, if we're not posturing it in such a way that our clients are, you know, excited about it, then people who haven't been coaching as long as us are probably not knowing how to do that either. So, anyone, anyone else want to add to that? I've had two people that said I can't go over the late years and Holly Glavin, you, you guys remember her and Christina actually. And I just called Christina last week and I asked her, do you want to go? And she said, yeah, but I can't, you know, and we just talked through it. And I said, but if you could, what would that look like? And, and she had a breakthrough and she, and now she's going, but, but it was me literally interfacing with her and walking through let's let's reverse engineer this thing if you could what would need to happen and and she started talking about these things and we started we started addressing them and then pretty soon there was enough of those things that were addressed and she had one more question she had to talk to her husband the next day she says i guess what i'm going <laughs> i was like what like it was so fulfilling to go, this probably is not going to happen. I don't know, but let's just have the conversation anyway. And well, and, and it helped me through a lot. It helped me through a lot of doubt, you know, like, oh, my husband financially may not want me to go because I just got back from Tulsa going on this, like, fun trip. I mean, not that Dallas won't be fun, but, like, I didn't even want to ask the question, but I approached it in a different way other than through doubt. It was, like, through hope instead. And, you know, sometimes people, I know for me, I really need that. I really need that extra little bit of, the extra spoonful of hope that says, if you want to do something, you can do it. The only person that's standing in your way is really you. And, um, and that was something that really registered with me. So if I didn't ask the question, I wouldn't know the answer. And, and I, and I wanted to ask the question because I really wanted to know the answer. <laughs> so. I love that, Christina. One one thing that I have noticed in my mind is I do think it's a little easier in my mind anyway. Sorry, for um, to invite.
somebody who's interested in coaching or is a coach, right? To, in my brain, a whole different scenarios than how to bridge that with a client that really, it's a different mindset as a client than somebody who's thinking about coaching. Yeah. I wonder if we might find some time just to, to focus on that, you know, maybe soon <laughs> because it's coming up soon. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things I want to just give so that we can all get past some of the fears and doubts and thoughts that keep us from doing what we know is to write down, what do I know I really want to do? Just write it down. Like, what do I know I really want to do? Take 10 seconds. That's it. Get it out there and say, I'm going for that. I'm going for that. Not all these thoughts and feelings and stuff like that clouding my judgment. I know I want that. And if you don't want it, you don't want it. Proclaim that too. I don't want to go. That is the most important thing a person can make as a decision mm -hmm. that I want to go or I don't want to go. And then say, I'm going for it and stop making excuses. Stop kidding yourself. And I'm not talking about just convention. I'm talking about anything. Figure it out until, and just, you won't, you won't have any regret. You'll be able to die in peace if you live your life that way. I believe it. I, yeah, I don't want to go on any further. You guys want to go on to the next question? Yeah. Okay. Number four, I think. Kim, can I trade you? Sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, shall we check to see if the answers are the same on four and five? <laughs> it looks like they are. That's good. We were, we were consistent. Um, so as far as the um, utilizing the results of the well-being assessment in order to ask questions, we have about half of us that are feeling confident with that um, to understand the, cl the candidate, their needs and desires. Um, and so... Um, would anybody be willing to hop off of mute and just give us some some of a description of where that confidence is lacking for you? Anybody that that did four, three, two, two or one? <laughs> One thing I'll say is, is this is the time to get the team coaching support. Um, really, really important about working on a team is to be open and honest about where you're at. If Picture if we're playing, um, I'm not sure what your sport is, but not necessarily basketball is my sport. But if you're playing basketball, when you want your team to know where you need to work so that they can best support that. And so if you could think of it that way, this is the time not to be shy about it is to put it out there. Right. It's so tell me which which question are we on because I can't see the poll results anymore. It's about the so t it's not just doing the um it's not inviting to the well being assessment. It is because I mean, we had a lot of confidence with that. That was great and getting somebody to to do a well being evaluation is great. Um, but it's the part where we're actually going through that assessment with them and asking questions to help us understand what their needs and desires are and we had some lower scores on that one so so where is that where is the sticking point for that for you with the with that part of the well-being well, oh. well I know that for me um that I I struggle with the wording how how to how to word things so that they come across in a way of not of non being non-judgmental you know um, so that I can actually just understand because I, I know for me, like if I'm not, if I don't, if somebody doesn't word something with me the right way, I, I take it kind of personal and I'm like, well, who are you to talk to me like that, you know, or whatever, like, but I don't, I don't know. I guess I just, I'm trying to be really careful with, with that kind of approach, I guess. Yeah. So Christina, are you feeling like with the well-being evaluation, you need to be informative to the person that has taken it, like explain things to them and what to do? Um, yes and no. I guess I just, um, I like when going through the well-being, having the actual well-being interview, like 
you know, I've done a couple with Craig. I've done more than a couple with Craig, but I, I've done them with somebody. And then when I do them on my own, I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't, I, I got nothing, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> my wording is off like big time. And then I end up digressing in the conversation because I can't, I can't, my mind can't wrap around the, the, the right way to word something. I, I have a hard time looking at it as like just having a conversation, getting to know them. Okay. Hey guys, I'm right now I'm going through my maintenance part. And so I've got an appointment, but I would like to say thank you to Alex and thank you to Daniela for the words about my story. And thanks to Alex for the words about my list and Craig will get together and celebrate soon. And then I'll see you guys soon. Awesome. Thank you, Dayton. Good seeing you. Thank you, Dayton. So, so that that's great feedback, Christine. I think that's very helpful, and and definitely, um, I think we can follow up with some great questions, key questions on that to ask. I, I, I love what you said at the end there, Christina, is you really are just trying to get to know them. And I know you've heard us say this before. We're not trying to manipulate or get somebody to do anything they don't want to do. You're right. We're not. And so if you're really just exploring, imagining, imagine that you're going to write a paper on them this is a great way of thinking about it. I'm going to write a one page paper on this person after I talk to them and I'm going to give it to them and they're going to judge whether I know them or not. So what questions would I ask? And then just go from there. Just totally be exploratory. Be, be authentically curious. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know how this is connected to that. And you just have, and you can practice that in everyday conversations with everybody so do you think it would be a good idea since i need um, kind of a visual learner do you think it'd be a good idea to go through the well-being assessment with you or somebody and for actually form questions that i can actually just write down and be like oh when they talk about when they talk about this category i ask this question and if they say this, if they say, I don't know, then you say, well, what if you did know that I know that one, that one's smart. See, see, I actually but, think you know more than you think, you know, personally, but I think it's just practice for you personally. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. It's just the conversation. Like, I don't know that that's something you can script every question because depending on what they say, you know, it's kind of like when you meet somebody brand new, you know, there's a couple opening questions. Sure. What's your name? You know, <laughs> do you live around here or something like that? But depending on what they respond, you know, they may say, no, I don't live around here. I'm visiting from Germany. Well, oh, great. Well, so how did you end up coming here? Or where from Germany, right? It, it just opens up a whole bunch of different um, pieces of I guess I was, I guess I was more like saying that because of, um, you know, there are some generic standard questions that you would ask during well-being evaluation and you know if it goes off the normal beaten path then then that great it just helps get to know that person more but um i i don't know i guess i get a little sh shy with trying to form things in the right way so having the list of generic questions that would apply no matter who you're talking to you know this if they their rate status is a two and and I want to know what a 10 looks like. Like, what would that, you know, how, how would I ask that? Like, how, how would I be like, oh, you're, you're weak. You know, I don't know. I just, I, yeah, I get I, nervous, I guess. I, I'm not a nervous social person. Let me, let, me jump, let me jump in. I know we're at a limited time. This will help with telling your story. This will help with well-being evaluations. It'll help you with um, potentially with a coach. And, and it's, it's a basic principle. And Craig said it earlier. You practice until it's so boring to say it you practice what I did was I sat in front of a mirror I literally did this and I did it over and over and over again but I had a script to follow and Craig gave it to me and I followed the script and I did it with excitement I did it with funniness I did it with different tones and I think I got through about eight to ten times and I was bored afterwards and I was like I got it and I called Craig immediately 
And I was like, all right, dude. <laughs> and I just did it. And it was like, it came across brilliant. Have you done that yet, Christina? Did I lose you? Did I get too excited for you? You're muted. Have you done that yet? No. Would you do that? I can. I was thinking maybe since my daughter likes to spend time with me, I would have a little bit of a babble conversation with her. Maybe I can do it. I'm going to narrow your focus though. Will you spend 30 minutes to 45 minutes in front of a mirror practicing the script that Craig gives you over and over till it gets boring? Yes. 30 to 45 minutes. And then will you call Craig immediately and do one with him? Craig, expect my phone call. When will you do that by? <laughs> Right? I'm excited. I'm happy for you. All right. We're glad, Dayton. When will you do that by, Christina? Crap, you're making me commit. That's right. That's um, how this works. That's how this works. This is what I had to do. And I, I tell you, my life changed after that with telling my story to people. Stop telling me my life's going to change because that's how I got to national convention. Okay. That's right. Good. <laughs> I will do it. I will do it by next Wednesday. Oh my goodness, so far away. Why? I well, I'm going to be traveling this weekend, so I can't do it this weekend, but okay. I will still practice. Yeah, you can practice. All right. So, what I would encourage is whenever you set a date, try and see if you can cut it by half and cuz your brain only does it, you'll wait all that time. I get it if you have other commitments. But this is something that takes 30 to 45 minutes, but Craig obviously needs to make sure you have a solid script that you can trust and then you can go for it. All right, Debbie, you'll do it by Sunday. That's awesome. All right, I expect, I look okay, forward to it. Okay, okay, Sunday, okay, Sunday. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Let's ride this wave. That's how it happens. This is gonna be, this is how we do it. And we're gonna get some people healthy and ourselves grow. Thank you. I'm You're welcome. You. I really am generally excited for you. <laughs> I say thank you because this is our team. We're ready to grow, right? We're ready to move forward. Well, Craig was saying something about my teachableness and how I get real hesitant about saying yes, but I end up saying yes anyways, and then I end right. up doing it, and then I grow, and then, oh my gosh, then I end up being right. teachable. And, and that's all I'm doing is I'm focusing your brain to get rid of that hesitation thought dialogue, and that's a practice. Look, there's the habit that's going on there. I could see it keep coming out, and it's, you can let that be there, and you can still act, and that's what's happening. I can't wait okay. for you to meet Dr. Anderson. <laughs> Fine, Alex. You have my commitment. Yeah, you just got a little Dr. Anderson there. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I think we'll continue. This has been really good, and I think we'll continue to, to go over these. It's super helpful uh, to see where we're at and what we need help on. And we're going to be developing trainings in the future that will help unpack these. Some of these will need to be one on ones, and some of these can be team team activities and so this is going to be super helpful thank you ladies this is so good to get uh, an, an assessment of where we're at and where we need to be so we're, uh, we're up against the top of the hour and so um, we'll continue to look over these notes we may end up bringing them back next week and continuing to unpack these I think that would be helpful and uh, we'll see you guys um, next week I'll be at wheelchair camp so I won't be technically or not I won't be physically or technically here, but, um, uh, or I don't know, I might be, I might not. But anyway, um, um, thank you for all your participation. Thank you, ladies, for all your hard work on this, and we will see you, um, see you next week. Take care, everybody.